the central focus of whatever small amount of mental training I give my students comes down to a, a very, very simple concept to understand. This is the idea of identifying competition in terms of its normalcy. Most people see training and competition as two different things. Training is normal activity that you do every day. And competition is the exception. Okay, it's different. You're going out, there's people watching you. There's a big crowd. They're making lots of noise. Um, in fact, the promoters of shows go out of their way to reinforce this. Look at, for example, ADCC, when Gordon Ryan went to fight Andre Galvan. Okay, do they just come out on the mat and fight each other? Absolutely not. There's, there's, there's music, there's <laughs> pageantry, there's fireballs. They're literally shooting fireballs. Yeah. Uh, some dude in a tie sitting with Joe Rogan. I heard about that guy. meathead uh, po podcaster, comedian, whatever. Uh, Which one was the meathead? <laughs> well, well played, John Donahoe, well played. But you see what they're trying to do. They're trying to create theater and pageantry when in fact it's just a grappling match. It's just two athletes, a referee and a rule set. That's, that's the reality. Now, what they try to sell you is something which is not reality, which is this is somehow bigger and different. And they reinforce this with pageantry and theater so that it becomes not just a grappling match, but a grappling performance, the same way you have a theater performance. And my goal as a coach is to dispel that and say, when you go out there, there's only one reality, you, him, and the referee reinforcing a rule set. That's it. Everything else you see, the smoke, the fire, the music, is an illusion. And it's put there intentionally to make you feel a certain kind of way. And your whole goal is to see this as an illusion and walk out and see only the reality, which is that this is the same damn thing you do every day in the gym. The only difference is you're going with a guy you've never grappled before. So the actual act of removing the illusion or realizing that it is an illusion, how do you practice that? So when you step on the mat- Once you're aware of it, I, I, I always have them, to, it, you, it, 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 it's like when you, yeah. when you see a magician and you have his tricks explained to you, you never see the magic again. The first time you see a good card trick from a, a good magician, it's oh my God. Then when they explain it to you, I, I did this, this and that, step one, step two, then you look at it like, mm, it's not that special. And when you explain to people this idea of the pageantry is an illusion, then just as when you watch the magician and you learn the trick, all the magic flies out the window, so too with the, the nervous response. Well, so that's for the pageantry, but what about the maybe the physical intensity of competition? Isn't there an extra... No, it's the same in every competition. It's, it's not like, you know, they're twice as strong in ADCC as they are in, in the IBGF World Championships. They, it's, the physical intensity is always pretty much the same. They experience it every day in the gym. And um, uh, like, you know, if, if you go out and you grapple Gordon Ryan, it's not like the next guy you grapple is going to be twice as strong as him or twice as fast. It's, it's going to be a little stronger, a little faster, but not so much so that it completely changes your approach to the game. Um, you know, there's not that much difference between the human bodies out there on stage. So if, if, you, if you've felt intensity before, you're not gonna be shocked by ADCC. But in terms of in training, do you have to try to match the intensity of competition? No, um, that would be foolish. You'd be, every athlete in the gym would be injured. Yeah. Uh, you can do it for short periods of time, um, but the, uh, the training has to be carefully monitored in terms of intensity levels. Remember, we're training seven days a week, a minimum of twice a day. Um, you, you've got to keep things under wraps. Like, you know, every other workout, you can have a like one of the five rounds can be full power, but not seven days a week, three times a day. That's, that's just going to break bodies. And the full power is just a reminder of... It's more about skill development. For us, it's it, always, it always comes back to skill development. But what about matching the the feeling of the intensity of competition? So, yeah, periodically. Periodically, but, but it can't be rarely. every single time. Not not really. It's not rare. Like Me, um, meaning, like, like you well, know, one like day. like uh, out of you know three hours of hard sparring per day, like fifteen minutes might be like one hundred percent full power. That way, you you 
Uh, that's more than enough to get psychologically ready for it, the intensity of conflict, but um, uh, but won't break your body over time. Intensity of conflict, that's well put. There is a um, competition, does, doesn't does it have that extra level of animosity? Like it it, it's a little bit more conflict than it is. It can, sometimes there's personality differences. Like for example, like Gordon Ryan and Felipe Pena, they admire each other a lot, they respect each other's skills, but they, they certainly don't, <laughs> like love each other, that's for sure. So, um, uh, so th th there can be certain matchup where there's more intensity, um, but then there's other matchups where the two athletes come out and it's um, it's no more intense than a hard sparring session. 